There are some disturbing questions being asked at television networks around the world these days. Fundamental questions, such as, how can news organizations remain relevant in the digital age? The numbers don't look good. A recent report from the Reuters Institute provides some hard data on how traditional television viewing is falling fast, while viewing a video online continues to rise. According to that report, the decline in TV viewing is comparable to the fall in print readership seen by newspapers a decade ago. And we all know how that worked out. So, for those of us in the TV news business, it's a wake-up call. How can broadcast news attract the attention of a younger generation accustomed to watching digital, on-demand, social, and mobile video on any device, anytime, anywhere? Everyone is experimenting. From the traditional legacy broadcasters like this one to the new purely digital players trying different forms of media to avoid becoming technologically outpaced, journalistically outmoded, and economically outdated. The Listening Post's Flo Phillips now on a medium in transition. Those are the headlines here at Al Jazeera. Coming up next, The Listening Post. Here at The Listening Post, we document the changes in the world of media. But like most TV news programs, our workflow is linear, dictated by a broadcast schedule. Here are some of the media stories we're covering this week. In order to meet our Saturday morning deadline, we start with an old-fashioned meeting on Monday morning to choose topics. Tuesdays are for research, questions, interviews. On Wednesday, it's into the studio to shoot links. Thursdays are game day. That's shorthand for scripting. And on Friday, the edit gets put to bed, finalized. It works, but is it fit for purpose in the digital age? I didn't have time to watch the whole episode because it's almost half an hour and I don't have half an hour. But if I should happen to have half an hour to spend, the listening post is really good content for the sofa. It's not so good content for waiting for the bus. When I tried to watch it, it took about two minutes, 25 seconds before the first item started. It looks nice on television, but it makes no sense online. The Listening Post is doing a lot of the right things. You chop those clips up, there's little video angles within each story, you add text on them, you get them into social media, you get them into social messaging apps, so you're spreading the word out in those ways as well. Where everybody's learning as they go along is what used to be called shovelware, where you just take stuff that has been broadcast and bung it online, shovel it online, clearly doesn't work. Just sharing your content on Facebook and video is not equal to going digital. My advice to anyone, not just the listening post, my advice to anyone who is creating content for both platforms is to first put out the short form of that content because the big advantage that digital has brought for the younger audiences is that it's prime time all the time. The audiences tuning in to this kind of newscast are getting older. And the trend for general TV news viewership, at least in the US and the UK, is alarming. Over the next 10 years, TV audiences will fall by a quarter. Legacy broadcasters have been forced to experiment to find new ways to complement the more traditional offerings they've put on TV. It's incredibly varied in terms of how they've approached it. For example, uh, uh, CBS, uh, which has never had a 24-hour news network, decided to launch one, but when it did, it did it as a streaming service, a digital-first operation. But then you also have uh, companies like, like CNN, which launched Great Big Story. The focus for that unit is to expand beyond CNN's core offering, which has always been hard news. BBC has a few initiatives. They have BBC Trending, which is them trying to reach people on social platforms. But then you also have a service in the works called Livestream, which would allow people to basically get news content across platforms. It's good that people are innovating and trying things like virtual reality services, news offerings, so particularly on the uh, migrant story for example, you know they've offered taking people into either a 3D or a virtual reality experience of being on the beaches with the migrants, trying to let the viewer understand and feel if you like through that experience. Live online video is going to be a really interesting thing so we have Periscope, there's now Facebook Live where people can do a live broadcast straight into their Facebook feed and there's some quite interesting experiments there and one of the things that that does is takes the viewer feels that they've got a little bit of in, on the inside loop they're kind of inside the story alongside the journalist with what's happening they feel they're getting a kind of peek behind the curtain short snappy videos on snapchat and Instagram 
live video content on platforms like Periscope and Facebook Live, texted vertical videos on social media platforms. These are just some of the ways traditional news broadcasters are experimenting with repackaging and repurposing their news content for the growing numbers of online viewers. But there is a new joint venture in India, Bloomberg Quint, which is turning things upside down. Up until now, there are the big legacy networks here who, have, who are integrating digital into their workflow. But we're actually putting the horse before the cart, which is you're saying you're first going to go digital, optimize all ways in which business news content can be delivered effectively to its niche corporate audience in the digital space and then bring those digital learnings to broadcast through an integrated newsroom workflow. When it comes to the, the digital native publishers, whether we're talking about uh, BuzzFeed or, or AJ Plus or now this, what many of these companies have realized first and foremost is making content that is tailored to the platform. For example, with Facebook, because a lot of the on-demand videos are showing up in your newsfeed, you have to grab the viewer's attention within the first three seconds with a striking image. Uh, Facebook videos also autoplay on silent, so a lot of publishers will use text on the bottom of the screen. That way, someone can watch the video without necessarily having to listen to it. There's one media organization that's done something seemingly counterintuitive, US-based Vice which made its name catering to millennials on the web, has inked a deal with HBO to produce a daily newscast for their cable audience, as well as launching Viceland, its own 24-hour TV news channel just three months ago. Do they know something others don't? Vice is launching a TV channel because that's still where the money is. Consumption habits are evolving. People are watching more on their mobile devices, more on their phones, more on their laptops. But the fact of the matter is the advertising dollars have not shifted the way consumption has. So for any business to be a legitimate business, you need to go where the dollars are. And right now, there's $70 billion being allocated to advertising on television. So it's important if you have the opportunity to be as diversified as possible. So that's why Vice is going on TV. It's an ongoing experiment, but so far, no media outlet can report it has found the magic formula, the solution. Most of them are simply seeing what's working for others and doing a copy and paste job. Emulating is a really stupid thing to do uh, because things are changing quite fast and if your strategy is to emulate what other successes, you will usually have a different starting point and you will use quite a lot of time before you see, ah, oh, this looks like it's working and you'll be a year or two years behind. You should rather try to just find out what is it that makes you strong and build on that. No matter where you're watching us, on TV, on a tablet, on YouTube, or maybe you saw a short preview on Facebook, we're still alive. Whether that's as a result of new technologies or despite them doesn't really matter. What does matter is where we and other traditional broadcasts go from here. More voices on the download now on old school news media trying to make their way through the new digital landscape. The biggest problem is that uh, TV news lost its main prerogative, and that's immediacy. Uh, breaking news was first and foremost on TV, then on the radio, and then the day after on the papers. Now you get uh, Twitter notifications. So if print was uh, dying because of websites and tablets and smartphones, uh, the same thing is happening to TV. People can't always make time to consume an entire half hour or hour news show just to get the two or three stories in which they're interested. Online news delivery makes it possible to provide additional information about a story by linking out to various resources. Again, it comes down to trust and credibility making it easier for people to check their facts.